In this video, I'll be introducing you to a unique sounding stringed instrument from Afghanistan. The instrument in question is the Rabab, also spelled Rubab and less commonly Robab, probably on account of regional differences in pronunciation and the usual uncertainties regarding transliteration from a language that uses one alphabet to a language that uses another. If you're interested in this instrument and wish to study it further, you'll want to search under all three spellings. The Rabab is quite unlike any other stringed instrument on earth, and even though it shares a name with the Rababa of Egypt and the Rebab of Indonesia, it's nothing like those other instruments. In fact, the name actually means bowed stringed instrument, and that's an accurate description of the instruments from Egypt and Indonesia, which also share other similarities, but not at all a description of this instrument from Afghanistan, which is plucked instead of bowed. Most stringed instruments familiar in the West are lightweight resonant wooden boxes, usually made of thin plywood. That's an accurate description of every member of the violin family, of the guitar, lute, balalaika, ukulele, and so on. This instrument, on the other hand, is carved from a single block of wood, usually mulberry or walnut, both of which are quite massive and dense. The region that is played is a scooped out hollow over which a covering of animal hide is stretched tightly like a drum head. The bridge of this instrument sits directly on that head, and it is this unique construction that lends the rabab a sound unlike that of any other instrument on the planet. The wooden body of the instrument, unlike that of a violin or guitar, has no natural resonance whatsoever, but the open chamber underneath the right hand serves as a kind of built-in amplifier, and the instrument's many resonance strings, different numbers depending on the particular instrument, which comes in three basic sizes, add a little extra garnish to the rabab's distinctive sound. In performance, the rabab is most often paired with the tabla, as you see in this image and will hear in both the music in this lecture and the follow-up video that I'll ask you to watch when you're done with this one. To introduce you to this instrument, I'm going to treat you to a performance of Gar Aya Mera Pardesi, My Wanderer Has Returned Home. Although it is played here by a notable Afghan musician, Humayun Saki, the song is actually in Hindi and was written for a film made in India, but the language doesn't matter here, as we'll hear it played, not sung, with the song worked up into a fascinating performance that features both expert playing and compositional elegance. Per my usual pattern, I must seize this opportunity to talk you through the structure of the piece, as the understanding of that is necessary to anything that could be called a proper appreciation of any music. The composition is set in the darkest of the minor modes, Phrygian, on F-sharp. Before we hear it, I'll take you through a preview in the form of an outline. The work is in three large parts, with the second part, the main body, being by far the longest. There's a two-part introduction, with the first part just a little foretaste of a falling cadential figure that you'll hear again and again played in free rhythm. The second part of the introduction is considerably longer, with the pulse now established by the addition of the tabla and other percussive effects. As you can see from the outline, this part of the introduction is organized in three paragraphs. The main body of the work behaves in broad outline, somewhat like sonata form in the classical music of the West, but it's just an outline, and I mention sonata form only as a basis of comparison in case some of you are familiar with it. The first part, a double exposition of three themes, is as long as parts two and three, the development and recapitulation, combined. The exposition is organized in two cycles of cycles, hence hypercycles, and during these cycles the three themes, one, two, and three, are set forth. The themes are fairly similar in their sound, so you'll need to listen carefully in order to differentiate them. The brief development section begins with a sort of fanfare and continues with a varied treatment of a falling cadential pattern or motive heard during all three of the themes. When that development has run its course, the recapitulation consists only of a single cycle, cycle B, with its constituent themes brought back in reverse order. The coda is set in a different meter and tempo from everything that preceded it. You can count the meter as either 6-8, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, or three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, or both. The musical ideas in the coda are all summary in character, and the piece ends with a melodic tumble to the tonic, which is greeted forthwith by enthusiastic, well-deserved applause. Enjoy the music and do try to internalize the way the whole is organized. That last should be fairly easy to do since the whole piece is only a little over eight minutes long. The playing really is masterful.
Now I want to say just a few words about the Pashtuns, a sizable ethnic minority in Afghanistan and neighboring Pakistan, for whom the rabab is the principal musical instrument, an instrument central to their musical identity. Until the last couple of generations, the majority of the Pashtuns were nomadic pastoralists, that is, they tended herds of goats and camels, flocks of sheep, and so on. Most of their time was spent out on the mountainsides, driving their herds from pasturage to pasturage with the changing seasons and visiting cities only rarely. Quite a few of them, in order to occupy their spare time, of which you'd have quite a lot following that way of life, learned to play the rabab. If you have a lot of time to devote to such a pursuit, you're apt to get really good at it. That's why there's such a distinctive school of rabab playing associated with the Pashtuns. I want you to watch a video of a young Pashtun musician named Ishar. In the clip I'll link you to, Ishar and a tabla-playing friend are out on a mountainside entertaining some other friends with their music. I have to tell you, every time I watch this, I'm reminded of why it is that I fell in love with music in the first place all those decades ago. You'll find a link in the description below.